Mojave Wasteland is a very dangerous place. There's a camp of near do wells around every corner, and even the local merchants are armed to the teeth and ready to shoot anyone who looks at them cross-eyed. Towns and their citizens are being burned down, and the locals are caught in the middle of a war for Hoover Dam being fought by the New California Republic and Caesar's Legion. Mojave needs a hero. Or better yet, how about three of them? For this challenge, I will play as Professor Utonium and will not engage in direct combat myself. I did my best to make my character look like the Professor using New Vegas' character creator. Special stats are 4 Strength, 4 Perception, 4 Endurance, 6 Charisma, 9 Intelligence, he is a Professor after all, 4 Agility, and 9 Luck. Why 9 Luck? Because anybody who can create superheroes by accident trying to create a perfect little girl with chemistry has to have a high luck stat. Six Charisma will raise companion nerves, since for this challenge, only the Powerpuff Girls may attack enemies. After answering Doc Mitchell's questions, as I imagine Professor Utonium would, I tagged the skill Science, obviously, Speech, because the Professor has given good speeches and fatherly advice to the girls before, and Survival, since he does know how to cook, according to the show. I will mostly raise these skills, Barter, Repair, and Medicine through level-ups. For traits, I chose Good Natured and Wild Wasteland. Before leaving Doc Mitchell's house, I grabbed some sugar, spice, and everything nice and used a console command to give myself a scientist outfit to complete the look. This is the only outfit Professor Utonium is allowed to wear for this run. Headwear is allowed, but only so I can use the rebreather when going underwater. I sell off most of the courier's stash to Chet before heading out. See, I'm currently in Good Springs, and the Powerpuff Girls are all the way out in Novak. So my first task is to run all the way to Novak to go and pick up the girls. After a long and fairly uneventful trip, I finally arrive in Novak, and can show off the mod properly. You're, think you're probably thinking Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup look like women cosplaying as sexy versions of the Powerpuff Girls, but nope. We've got the real deal here. They're even fully voiced. Buttercup. Oh man, so embarrassing. There's power in the pup. You are such a know-it-all. With the family reunited, the real game can begin. But first, I sell some items to Cliff Briscoe and buy three Dinky the T-Rex souvenirs, one for each of the girls. We then head back to Good Springs. After the professor wins a carnival game set up in the back of the Prospector Saloon, he and the girls discover there's trouble brewing in the small town. A gang of escaped convicts called the Powder Gangers are threatening the town, searching for a merchant named Ringo who is hiding out somewhere. After the professor uses his know-how to fix up Trudy's radio, he and the girls head to the gas station to meet up with Ringo. Ringo seems to think we need more help than just the Powerpuff Girls, so I talk to Sunny Smiles at his behest. She's happy to help, but asks to talk to Trudy for some even more help, as well as Chet and Doc Mitchell for some leather armor and medical supplies, which I do. 
She also suggested talking to Easy Pete, but the professor wouldn't be able to talk him into giving up his dynamite, which the girls don't need anyway. Allow the Powerpuff Girls to demonstrate by using the giant mantises in the old schoolhouse for practice. With the schoolhouse cleared, I have the professor hack the computer to get the safe open for the stealth boy and other goodies. Then I go back to Ringo to let him know we're ready to fight for him. I take a few hits during the gunfight because I got stuck in the Brahmin pen trying to get behind Easy Pete's house to take cover, but the girls make quick work of the powder gang. up the snow globe in the cemetery, I talk to Barton Thorne, who tells the professor his girlfriend is trapped on a ridge by some geckos. The Powerpuff Girls, eager to help, clear the ridge of geckos, but find no sign of Barton's girlfriend. Turns out Barton was trying to set a trap for them, clearly having no idea who he's messing with. Taking the road to Prim, Johnson Nash asks the Powerpuff Girls for help, as criminals have overrun the town, killed the sheriff, and are holding the deputy hostage in the Bison Steve Hotel. The girls clear the building of convicts while the professor hacks into a computer to open a door and repair an elevator, then talks to and frees Deputy Beagle, who asks for a new sheriff. Professor Utonium grants his request by reprogramming Prim Slim to be the sheriff and repairs a robot in the Mojave Express. Unfortunately, we cannot take EDE with us. Sorry about that, Bubbles. The girls have no trouble clearing the way to the Mojave Outpost, where Ranger Jackson asks if they could clear some giant ants off the road. I just hang back and let the Powerpuff Girls do what they do best. <laughs> Jackson rewards the girls for their work with some packed lunches, and rewards the professor with... a rifle? I sold that off to one of the traveling merchants before heading out to Tord Nipton. I took cover behind some rubble and let the Powerpuff Girls take out the vipers lying in wait to ambush travelers. Nipton is a burning wreck when we arrive. The boxcars tells the professor it was Caesar's Legion who did this to the town, while the professor prescribes prescribe some medics to help ease the pain of having his legs smashed. Then talks to Volpez and Colta, who asks the professor to let the NCR know what happened to Nipton. I can't have the Powerpuff Girls attack the Legion, as they won't fight anyone not hostile to the professor first. So I just do as Volpiz asks and let both Sergeant Kilborn and Ranger Ghost know about the Legion attack on Nipton. Using a stealth boy, the Professor is able to save the Powder Gangers taken as slaves by the Legion without starting a fight, then returns to Novak and agrees to clear the Repcon test site of ghouls. 
The girls easily clear the path of feral ghouls, so the professor can talk to Jason Bright. We agree to clear the basement of invisible demons, finding a dead female ghoul in their prison. Davison says Antler doesn't appreciate the Powerpuff Girls wiping out his friends and attacks, but he fares no better against them than the other Nightkin. Before we leave, we talk to Harlan, letting him know the way is clear, but sadly we were too late to save his girlfriend. He understands and rejoins the rest of Bright's group, who are happy to hear the demons are gone. On their way to meet them in the basement, the Professor breaks my no direct attacks rule and punches out Antler, then talks to fellow scientist Chris Haversum about finding the rest of what the ghouls need to take the great journey in their rockets. The Professor buys the thrust control module from Old Lady Gibson at a discount, then asks if she has any isotope 239, the sealed container. She tells the Professor a strange man in a radiation suit purchased all that she had and ran off toward Clark Field. The Professor finds Mr. Radical's body and the sealed container of the igniting agent while the Powerpuff Girls protect him from the Golden Geckos. With the components found and everything prepared, Chris is a bit upset when he learns the ghouls aren't taking him with them on the Great Journey, thinking that he can't go live with humans again, saying that humans hate him. The Professor tells Chris he's a good person, and he'll have the advantage of being Saint Chris Haversum now, which cheers him up a little. While Chris heads to Novak to start his new life, Professor Utonium uses his scientific knowledge to better guide the rockets to their destination and sends them on their way. Jeannie May is so appreciative of what the Professor and the girls have done for Novak that she gives them a hotel room for free. What a nice lady. We don't stay in Novak for long, though, as our next stop is Helios 1. The soldier outside normally doesn't let anyone in, but seeing that the Professor is a scientist makes them more welcoming. After all, he can't be more incompetent than that idiot in the sunglasses they hired to get the power plant running. After letting Fantastic know he's here to do his job for him, the Professor talks to another fellow scientist, Ignacio. He tells the Professor he's here on behalf of the followers of the Apocalypse, and is happy to help when the Professor tells him he wants to start up the power plant and send the power to the full region. After resetting the mainframe connection on the terminals outside, the Professor and the Powerpuff Girls head into the Solar Collection Tower. Looks like Mojo Jojo has activated the plant security, and the Professor gets blasted off his feet by some frag mines while running for cover from a turret while the Powerpuff Girls clear out Mojo's robot minions. After repairing the broken wire, the Professor configures the power grid to work for the whole region, then goes outside and flips on the switch. Mind your eyes, girls! And you send it to everyone. Very admirable. The followers will be grateful. Powerpuff Girls blast away the giant fire ants on the way to Boulder City, where a hostage situation is taking place between the Great Cons and the NCR. Rather than send in the Powerpuff Girls, however, I have Professor Utonium take the diplomatic approach, convincing the Great Cons to let the hostages go in exchange for being allowed to leave Boulder City without further conflict. I let Lieutenant Monroe know about the deal, and he agrees to let the Great Cons leave peacefully. We make a brief stop in Camp Golf to talk to O'Hanrahan, who turns out to be a big fan of the Powerpuff Girls, particularly the way they work together. The professor levels up telling him and the misfits how they could learn a thing or two from tip out teamwork from the girls, and I get the animal friend perk allowing Bubbles to talk to animals to keep them from attacking the professor from now on. Freeside is full of crime. While the Powerpuff Girls are eager to clear the streets of thugs, the Professor takes the time to convince Jacob Hoff and Bill Ronte to sober up. Dixon is quick to give up supplying chems and changing his ways, having seen what the Powerpuff Girls were doing to the Freeside thugs. Some robots are guarding the entrance into the New Vegas Strip, but the Professor convinces them to let him and the girls pass. He even gets one robot to agree to buy the girls some ice cream later. They still blast the thug that tried to sneak past them, though. Once on the Strip, Victor tells the Professor the first casino he should head into is the Lucky 38. The head of the Strip, Mr. House, wants to talk to the Professor and ask for help from him and the Powerpuff Girls about something important. To my surprise, Victor allows the Powerpuff Girls to come into the casino with the Professor, but he usually forces her companions to wait outside. Maybe Mr. House knows they're a family. Or maybe he knows how far the girls will go to get their dad back if they suspect that he might be in trouble. The girls are even allowed to accompany the Professor into the penthouse while he talks to Mr. House. Mr. House tells the Professor and the girls that Benny, the head of the chairman who run the Topps Casino and one of his employees, has stolen a valuable piece of his property, a poker chip made out of platinum, 
and that he wants it back. What the girls do to Benny is of no concern of his, so long as the platinum chip is returned. After receiving a message from Dennis Crocker, an ambassador of the NCR, the family leaves the Lucky 38 and heads for the tops. People can't help but notice the Professor and the Powerpuff Girls leaving the Lucky 38, while the Professor is more intrigued by the strange behavior of two of the strip's patrons just walking into each other. The Professor has no weapons for the chairman to take, so he's let through without issue. He talks to Swank and lets him know about Benny's crime against Mr. House. Swank agrees to let the Professor and the girls check Benny's room for clues regarding what he might be up to, stumbling across Yes Man, a Securitron Benny had reprogrammed in an attempt to usurp control of the strip from Mr. House. Yes Man tells the Professor on the plat that the Platinum Chip is actually a data storage device, though he isn't entirely sure what kind of data is stored on it. His best guess is that it's information Mr. House needs to upgrade his defense systems. Yes Man also confirms Benny's plan to replace Mr. House with Yes Man's programming so that he can take control of New Vegas for himself. Then Yes Man tells the Professor that if he had the Platinum Chip, and has already been in the Lucky 38, Yes Man's programming would compel him to help the Professor do what Benny was planning. The Professor lets Swank know what he's discovered, and Swank tells the Professor he needs to have the Powerpuff Girls take out Benny. The Professor gives Benny one chance to hand over the Platinum Chip and the girls won't harm him. When he refuses and draws a gun, the girls take Benny out to defend the Professor. Shame he wouldn't be reasonable, but Swank promises to run the tops in his place. As soon as they leave the tops, a disguised Vulpez and Culta gives the Professor the mark of Kaisar and tells him he is invited to go to Cottonwood Cove to, and take the boat there to the fort to have an audience with Kaisar himself. The Powerpuff Girls aren't going to like the Legion very much, so this is likely a mistake on their part. First things first, the Professor retrieves the Platinum Chip and returns it to Mr. House. He leads the Professor and the girls into the basement to show off what the Platinum Chip is really for. It upgrades the Securitrons, making them even deadlier than before. The Professor asks Mr. House what he's planning to do with these upgrades to his robots, but Mr. House makes some vague comments about using them to defend New Vegas from the war between the NCR and Caesar's Legion. This is the end of Part 1. Next up will be a poll. What should Professor Utonium and the Powerpuff Girls do now? Should they trust Mr. House, help the NCR, or use Yes Man to make New Vegas truly independent? Go to the Community tab and cast your vote. The result of this poll will decide what happens in Part 2.